So today I woke up in my absolute bag. <laughs> in my bag, meaning. Absolute bag at 4.30 in the morning, couldn't fall back asleep and was absolutely locked in. I just was thinking to myself all morning, we're gonna make videos, I'm gonna make more, hyping myself up for Christopher's Factory in 2025. Something about the new year and that video that I made yesterday, how to make more, that was just as much almost like a, a message to myself as it was a video for other people. By the way, that bias that I couldn't think of last video was called confirmation bias. And an example of confirmation bias is I went back and I, I looked at all my successful videos in the past to see what works. And I've noticed that in all of those, I was basically bald. I had like shaved head. And now I've got pretty much a full head of hair. So I'm kind of worried. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe I need to shave it again if I want to do well this year. To be totally serious, I went back and looked and one of the things that did really well this year that, I mean, I, I talked about videos that I didn't expect to do really well. And by far the one that most surprised me in 2024 was the one about this little screw top container that you have to screw for like a deceptively long time to get the thing out. As soon as I was holding this in my hand, as soon as I designed it for the short, I was thinking to myself, man, this would be perfect for nicotine pouches. Not because I use nicotine myself, but because I know a lot of people that try to quit, having that additional step of having to turn a very large disc, large threads, like 20 times in order to get at your zins, I thought that that would be a really good roadblock to try to help people who are trying to quit. And this morning when I was saying to myself, lock in, lock in, lock in, that's kind of what it made me think of is, okay, I gotta go back and I gotta finish that good idea. And it was equally inspiring to see, I mean, look at just the quality, the difference between these two models. I mean, it's, it's really, it's hard to overstate how much better the green one looks. And to be fair, I wasn't really trying to be good with this. I was just trying to get a finished product out there for the video. But I just yesterday, I learned how to knurl and how gorgeous is that finish on the edges there? I've been around what I would consider to be a fair amount of addiction, people trying to quit substances that they are dependent, reliant, addicted to, but it's especially more depressing to see nicotine make such a comeback, especially amongst my generation. It's so depressing to me because we, we beat it. When I was in high school, the thought of smoking a cigarette would have turned me off, even when I was young and impressionable, because it was like, well, smoke a cigarette, what am I, 60 years old? Even vaping was kind of new at the time, and it was kind of like, well, you know, I don't know. They haven't tested the long-term effects of it. It's kind of scary, but smoking was like easy no. It was like, no, I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna get cancer. And the saddest thing is exactly what everybody said was going to happen, happened. All the younger kids got hooked on candy, cotton candy flavored vapes, you know, Sour Patch Kids, bright colors, themes. It's not smoking, it smells good. Yeah, they really, they tricked you into it. And then slowly those turned into, you know, using jewels and puff bars and elf bars and stuff. And then to try to quit that, people go to things like Zen and things like, you know, smokeless nicotine, as if it's any better. This is the tie, sorry, this is a really roundabout way of saying this. Lock in was in my head this morning. And so when I, when I think lock in, I think of Zins because everybody that I know from college that, you know, oh, I need to lock in for this exam. I gotta pop, you know, double decker Zins. And so that was, you know, in my mind when I was thinking lock in, it was like, okay, I should do the Zin video. And so I went and looked in, you know, okay, what are the actual, are there tangible benefits to nicotine use? I know all about the possible detriments. Are there any benefits? Fits. You know, I hear people talk about focus, but is that, are you really focused or is that just, you know, some sort of nootropic induced stimulation? The empirical evidence around using nicotine for any sort of tangible benefit, it, it, it read almost the exact same way that I already feel about energy drinks. You are drawn to it because you want the energy, in this case, the focus. And what actually happens is, yes, you do get energy for the first couple times that you drink them. But then after that, what really happens is your body adjusts pretty much instantly, and then you need much more of a dosage in order to get that same energy that you felt the first time, thus fueling the addiction cycle. I made this thing again with one millimeter pitch thread, so it's going to take, uh, it's 20 millimeters tall, so it's going to take 20 revolutions of this, I think it's 90 millimeters in diameter, so it's just, you have to unwind it like a crazy distance. Not only that, but I, I made the threads left-handed, in an attempt to try to, somebody that's using this case as a way to try to use Zins less, I made the threads left-handed so that when you pull it out, you just instinctively open it up. It doesn't open the same way that you're used to. Most threads are right-handed. In fact, even just me trying to unscrew it to talk about it, if I'm not focused on unscrewing it, it's very difficult just because your mind is so used to, you know, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So I was really excited about this design. There's also, it's probably too small to show you on camera, but there's a little channel that I made for air to escape from because otherwise when you put these cans in, it would make like an air stop. You wouldn't be able to 
to push it in further or get it out. Um, and so I was pretty proud of that. It was a cute little design thing that I did. I mentioned that I designed this little case, this little, it's a case for your case, so call exhibit. Everything about this case I designed with trying to quit using Zins in mind, which was why I branded it Zin so boldly on the front. You know, I do think that there should be some shame associated with it. And it's, we've kind of lost that recently. I kind of feel sad when I see the way that people respond to like Zin culture nowadays. There was a while ago, a couple months ago, that picture of the fighter jet was trending where the pilot had like a Zin ca uh, can or whatever these are called on like the dashboard of the jet or something. And everybody in the comments was like, oh, heck yeah, that's America right there. You know, we, we love our nicotine pouches. And it's like, well, why is everybody responding so positively to this? I'm not saying that we should be bullying people for having substance issues. That's not at all what I'm saying. But I do think that at the very least, it should not be encouraged. I think that there was a point in time where we really looked down on products like these as just a total complete waste of money and something that will literally kill you. Maybe our culture's always been this way and I just have not really been aware of it until now. But I really feel like in the past decade, we've, we've just warmed up to the idea of using these carcinogenic addictive substances that have no real tangible benefit to you. And we've just accepted it as like part of life now. So I'll be making a short about the anti-Zin anti-Zin can case can later today. Um, but I guess the reason that I wanted to make this a long form video as well is per adventure, you are still at the stage of life where you're not ingrained enough in your ways uh, that it's difficult to stop. If you are not at the point of needing something like this, let this be my admonition to you to implore you to not even try it in the first place. I want to phrase this delicately because I don't want to come across as if I'm blaming people for having substance addictions because it's, I mean, everything in our world is set up to entice you to buy things. And that includes legal stimulants, right? That includes things like Zinn where the marketing, the branding, I'm sure there's all sorts of shadow influencing going on with Zins as there is with everything else. Everything in the world is trying to get you to buy their thing, to get you to give them their money. And it's never been easier for advertisers to target you and figure out how you work, not just as a person, but as a demographic. And so part of me is not surprised that Zinn and other tobacco or nicotine products have taken such a hold in young people because we've never been able to target them as effectively as we can right now. The amount of money that I've saved, you know, even buying this thing, it was like, it was like six bucks, I think, or five bucks. No, it was more than that. I got a drink and a Zin and it was 1093, I think. So the Zin must have been like seven or eight bucks. Holy cow, which means that each of these little pouches is like a dollar almost. This is my really long winded way of saying that if you're not already into something like this, if you don't need this case, please don't get yourself in a position where you need it because you can avoid so much negativity in life by just avoiding things that you already know is going to cause it. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my rant and I hope you have a wonderful day.